welcome. My name is uh, Mike Holmes, and I've got the uh, great pleasure of being the principal here at Estancia High School, and I wanted to thank everyone for being here. I realized that in order for you to be here tonight, something incredibly important had to be put aside. You know, meals aren't being made, meals aren't being eaten, and you know, someone's not checking on someone's homework. A lot of you left work early or not at work right now. Um, I appreciate the sacrifice that you made. Being here tonight is incredibly important. Uh, the simple reality is, is that you know we're at a momentary pause in the uh, construction of our theater, and our superintendent's taking advantage of this pause to do something we probably should have done a while ago, which is hear from you. I'm only going to speak for a brief moment because tonight's really about giving you the opportunity to talk to us about some of the benefits and challenges that you see from your perspective over the different locations where our theater can be. Um, I know I talk about it's a challenge. You know, not all of our students could be here tonight. Uh, our drama students, who this is keenly important to, are doing their rehearsal right now. We had the opportunity to uh, meet with them and go through this presentation. Um, and so you already see some of the stickies are up there. Those are their thoughts. So some of you already got stickies you want to put your thoughts. There's going to be a chance for that. We just want to make sure that you already see that their voices have been recorded. Um, and we'll also be meeting with more students tomorrow to take advantage of them and hear from them. So student voice is important. Parent voice is important. Community voice is important. I often say your average principal's out of school for about five years. Your average high school student's here for about four years. But those of you who buy a house, you're living here for 30 years. This is a community project as much as it's a school project. Um, and we want to hear from you about how we can make sure we're always partnering together. I mean, the simple truth is, you know, schools are as strong as our communities. And communities become strong because of the schools. So we want to make sure we're always working together and listening to you. And with that said, I'm going to turn things over to Ada. Um, we're just going to talk to you about how tonight's going to look. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, thanks, Mike, for that intro. And that's exactly what we're here to do tonight, to talk about the theater, talk about the work that has been done, and get your input and feedback on what the ultimate uh, location of the theater will be for the school. So we're going to talk about the project overview, the project history, which there's been a lot of time dedicated to this project, the current status of the project, and then the site studies and the evaluations of all of those sites that we looked at. And then we are going to have questions and answers, but more importantly, we're going to have you walk around the room. And as you can see, we have all of the locations um, printed on the wall for you to look at. And then we have an area where you can put your comments. And so we have it um, separated from benefits and challenges from your perspective. The yellow stickies, like Mike said, are from the students from the drama program. And so, um, you know, reading through some of those is also very interesting. It was interesting to us earlier today when we were able to meet with them. Um, and so we'll, we'll give you that opportunity to walk around and put your comments up. We deliberately put different colors so that the students are represented by the yellow. And then the other stickies will be from this meeting. We'll be collecting all that information and sharing that with the board at a later date. So as we started working on this project, we needed to identify what the program was that we were supporting. Um, I've worked in this district for 18 years now. So I've been involved with all of the planning and construction for the theaters at Newport Harbor, Costa Mesa, and CDM. And so before we start design on a project, we always identify what the program is. What are the spaces that we need to support a theater program? So we had created this document um, with an architect many years ago, and that same document has been used to develop the scope for each project, each theater at each site. And so you'll see differences um, with the construction of each theater because of just the site conditions. So for example, at um, CDM, we had to demolish the building that had the, mute, the choral and instrumental room. And so the new theater ended up getting a new choral and instrumental room. 
So just depending on the site configuration and what already existed at the site, we were able to um, develop our program for each one of the sites. They all have the same program though. And um, so one of the things to consider is that regardless of the location, the square footage of each uh, space in the theater is the same. So it may be configured differently, but it will all receive the same square footage or more. One of the things that we did with Estancia was we went back and we looked at Newport Harbor, CDM, and Costa Mesa to determine if there were any deficiencies. And I'll give you an example of one. Uh, the black box square footage at some of the other sites, it's just a challenge to have circulation for the um, performers to get to their performance space and back. And so with this theater, we enlarged the black box so that we had better circulation to allow for that um, access to the performance area. Uh, so here you can see uh, this particular theater is a 350 seat theater uh, with the black box, with the lobby, with the concessions, with uh, spectator or uh, guest restrooms in the lobby. And then in the back of the house, we have scene shop, dressing rooms, and changing rooms, um, and let's see, oh, the, the prop and storage. And so there will be individual spaces that would be used on a daily basis by the site, and really that lobby space wouldn't be used on a regular basis, that would be for performances or events. So the project history. So believe it or not, Measure F was uh, established uh, in 2005. And so on that list of Measure F projects, Estancia Theater is one of those projects. We've completed the majority of the projects, and so we started planning for this project in 2017. And in order to do so, we had to sell another bond to fund this project, and we were successful in doing that in 2017. As you can see here, here are the years of the other projects that were completed. Newport Harbor is 2009, and both Costa Mesa and CDM were completed in 2015. So even though there's a, a large gap between these, um, these uh, completions, that's dependent on when we were able to sell the bonds in order to fund the projects. And so we were recently, uh, well, I'll, I'll say recently, but um, 2017 able to sell the bond for this project. So it's been a, quite a while that we've been planning for this. Uh, so yes, Estancia is the only site that hasn't received their new theater. We know you have an existing theater, but that doesn't meet the program needs that we identified for all the theaters in the district, which is why we're going into new construction. So here's just a little bit more on the timeline. Uh, so we started back in 2016 planning for the bond sale. We were <coughs> successful in hiring the architect in 2019. And I'll talk about these different phases here. So the conceptual design is understanding the size of the building that you need to, to support the program and the square footages for all of those spaces. So we went through that, design, that initial phase. And during that phase is when we started to look at all of the different sites. And once we had decided on a site, when we had, um, then we were able to enter into the schematic design, which is just understanding more how it fits in the location and what it would look like. What does it look like compared to the other buildings? What does it look like when you're driving up the street? What does it look like and how would you get to it from existing corridors, how students would get there from music, um, all those different things. Then design development is just more of the technical documents, putting the pieces together uh, so that we could have an estimate done. Each one of these phases we did do an estimate to see what that cost was going to be and the more you get through design, then the more detailed your estimate and accurate it can be. So what happens when you get through design development and you look at your estimate and you see what your budget is versus your estimate, you have to assess to see if you need to reduce cost by any, any manner. So that's what value engineering is. 
So you can see we took about five months going through the current plans and trying to determine what elements we could take out of the project to reduce the cost without compromising program or the aesthetics of the building or access to the building. So that was a, a thorough process we did there. Uh, next, the next process is completing your construction documents. And that's the color of paint. That is the type of countertops, um, the flooring. I mean, it's very detailed. And once we complete those documents, then we're able to submit our plans for approval. I'll say one more thing on that and then I'm going to hand it over. Um, so just to familiarize yourselves, when you do a home remodel, you're going to have plans developed and you're going to submit those to the city and the city is going to approve those plans. This being a school district project, we submit to the Division of State Architect, which is um, responsible for structural, fire life safety, and American Disabilities Act. And so they, they, are, they will approve our plans, which allows us to be able to go out to bid on the project. Um, so, so what we're doing now is taking you back to what, was, um, what were the five sites, and we're going to provide the opportunity for you to all have comments on those five sites. And our architect, Sonia Lester, is here. And she's going to walk you through each one of those options with some of the advantages and disadvantages. And then we'll be able to walk around and answer questions for you after. And we'll all be here. So I also have my staff, Jaime Vihar is here. We have our construction managers from uh, Safe, Work, uh, Safe Work Construction. So we'll all be here to answer any questions. You can have a more <coughs> informal conversation with us. But when she's completed, we will also open it up for questions as well. Anyone have any questions now? Actually, I do. Sure. So, so do we have a maximum cost that says we're never going to spend more than X, or as these continuing delays occur, does the price just continue to go up and up? So that's something that we're considering right now as we are pausing. The, the cost, you know, inflation is going to happen. Um, there's also things that we've considered, though, because of COVID and the um, lack of materials being available, manufacturing taking longer. There may be somewhat of an advantage of us starting this project later when materials are more readily available. So there, there's a, we're not sure exactly what that number is going to be at that point, but those were some of the things that we considered as we thought about the project moving forward. Because there was a time where we said, maybe we shouldn't even bid this at all. Maybe we should wait another year. Is there a cap? I think what this gentleman is asking, and I'm interested also, is there a cap on the maximum number of dollars that can be spent on this activity? So, at, to date, the board has, we have authorized $26 million from the Measure F bond and $6 million from um, capital facility improvements. So, if the board, if we were to bring back a cost that's higher than that, the board would have to, um, you know, increase the budget. We have been asked that question in open forum at a board meeting. And, and you have the money already. And we have been told that we do have money, the money to support the project moving forward. I don't know if my boss, Jeff, wants to say anything along those lines. But, but in the past, when we've been asked that question, we are in a position to be able to fund this project moving forward. Completely funded. Yes. So with that new information, I just want to say, has anybody calculated the cost for the education that our children have continuously been deprived of mm -hmm. over the years and the amount of money this this wonderful theater more seats would have generated to help build better shows and have more children participate has anybody yeah. bothered so i wouldn't be able to answer that question it's a question we can um, take down and consider how to answer it me being on the facility side you know doesn't really have that expertise but if that's important to you, please ask the question and, and we'll get back to you. So what number of students in this school annually mm. have participation in music, art, performing arts, <coughs> choral groups, uh, uh, instrumental music? I mean, what number of students are really going to use this yeah. that they I, couldn't use for the, either in the gym 
or in um, an auditorium if they have one? I understand the question. I don't have the answer, but again, if that's important to you, because it's on the education side of the house, my focus, and I don't mean to be dismissive by any means, but my focus is just to be able to give everyone an opportunity on reviewing the sites and what the pros and cons were. And I know, um, you know, that's something that we can get back to you on. Okay, if, I if, thought this was what was this about? But I guess it's not. Yes, Miss. <laughs> This meeting is about the location, no matter what there's something about the theater, right? Yes. Yes. I'll take a couple more questions and then I'm going to let Sonia get into the presentation so we can get through it and then we can ask many more questions. Yes. Vicki? Okay. Um, now, I know you can't answer this question, but in case somebody leaves early, um, we have two Costa Mesa City Council members here. And we have the superintendent of Newport Mesa. I would like to know how much of my taxpayer dollars has been spent on the lawsuit the city brought against um, Newport Mesa and continue to fight even though they lost. They're now appealing and possibly delaying the project. I'd like to know, based on what um, you are thinking, uh, that you are spending this money, and do you know how much money it is? Um, I don't know where the superintendent is, but I yeah. see. A I think I think those questions, if they're not specifically site related, we do have um, in this last uh, sheet over here. We have other input. Please put those questions down there. They can't answer it while they're here. I mean, I've got we've got two um, council members here, and they're very much. Um, into uh, not moving forward with this project and they are both alumni and I just I, I would think they know how much money has been spent. So first of all I apologize I didn't introduce uh, Dr. Smith our superintendent is here and Jeff Trader um, our CFO. Yeah uh, let me just say this first and, and then we'll, we'll get to the specific question just just to set the table so we don't waste anyone's time. We, we understand people are passionate about this. There are those folks who would say, we still don't want this to happen. This isn't that meeting, just so we're clear. Um, this meeting is specifically about the location, uh, as the board considers all of their options. Considering whether or not to do it is not the purpose of this meeting. So if that's why you're here, you're, just, you're welcome to stay. Okay. You're going to leave frustrated. Because what we're going to talk about are, are, are the locations and what you think about those specifically. Because the board, has already decided previously to do this. And the current board hasn't decided not to do it. So just for that. As far as litigation goes, I think we're all aware that I can't talk about any existing or pending litigation. So there won't be any talks about price tags or anything like that. Uh, speculation, just can't do it. But Dr. Smith, um, don't you agree that the reason the main re one of the main reasons this is being moved after the, a committee went through this and outreach was done is because of the lawsuit. You don't, I, that I, has I would some say my, my, my beliefs really don't factor into this because I don't get to vote. What, what I believe, what I think, not believe, is that we've had uh, students stand up uh, in mass. And I can tell you where I'm a board member, I'm not, and students come out in those kinds of numbers, it would make me listen. So I think that. Are you, I, I, are I you that. talking about the um, petition, or they actually have come to you in mass? Are you talking about the petition? We, we that had was them in, in board meetings, and, and yes, I'm aware of the. And they got a free piece of pizza if they signed the. <laughs> um, wow. Where? Come on. And, and I've, I've been on campus as well and didn't have pizza and talked, visited. I, I'm just saying, I, I think there's an opportunity to listen to that. Um, I think there's also an opportunity for the board to entertain information they didn't have before. And I think that's fair. That's transparency. I would like to hear that information fair. that they didn't have before. Yeah, I, and I think as we get to some of these conversations, some of that information may come up that the former board didn't have and I can tell you, because this has been said at the day, so this isn't speculation by the superintendent. This is recorded on YouTube. The trustees have said that that wasn't the information they were given when they were here and a part of that conversation. Well, nobody asked me. Nobody asked 
her, she was on the committee. Nobody. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm only speaking, you asked me to speak for the district. I'm speaking about what the current trustees have been asked. So I don't want to speculate, but I'll tell you that that's been set at the dais. And we also know some of the things that have been brought up. So that's, that's why we're By doing who? That. Who? Who said it? No. Somebody that was on somebody that was on the board when this decision occurred, or somebody that wasn't on the yes, board. Yes, yes, some of those on the board. Really? It, it's there on okay. YouTube. It's there on YouTube. Well, so we've talked about it. After I'll share it with you. It's not, not a secret. It's there. Well, then why don't you just say it? Because uh, again, I, I don't want to distract us from what we're trying to do tonight, which is to, to consider: <laughs> is there uh, the best location? Well, we already did that. Uh, but I okay, understand. do it I again. I do a lot of people know that, that this was done and approved and budgeted and all that that are here or not here? Uh, I, I couldn't speak to I I assume they do. It's been talked about a lot. But it's yeah, been we'll talked about a lot since this. I've been here. Okay. Yeah, so I assume they do, but that's, that's an assumption. I'd hate to make that. But we're going backwards. Mm -hmm. It depends on how you look at the information that's provided. And, and again, I wasn't here. So I, I'm probably the worst person to speak about it, but since I was asked a question, I decided to come before you and answer that question. I wasn't here. I hate to speculate, right? I know where we are now, and we have this opportunity to look at it again and look at all the information. Uh, and, and the board hasn't voted uh, to change anything. I think that's important to remember. But here is this opportunity you have tonight to say, those folks were 100% right, or maybe you should have considered this. Very good. Maybe. But that's what we're doing tonight. I would just say these folks up here, you know, if you're concerned with elected officials or superintendents, whatever, <laughs> there's, there's a place to come talk to us, right? Mm -hmm. Folks do it monthly, uh, <laughs> twice a month sometimes. Uh, what I would say is here's an opportunity with the staff here mm -hmm. to, to weigh in with them, right? Because I think they've got some good information for you. And, and there are other avenues. And I think you and I have met before, and we can meet again, and, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. But, but tonight, this, this is what we're trying to do. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to hand it over to Sonia in just a second. Um, so just a, a brief overview. There were five sites that we had considered and are looking at again tonight. So we have um, the most southern location, which was site one. And just for um, context, across the street is the fire department. Um, and then we have the residents here on Joanne Street. Site two, you're all familiar with the front of the school where the administration entry is and the um, senior lawn. Site three is parking. Site four has tennis courts and the football team room, weight area, shade structures, that whole um, facility. And then site five here, again, is adjacent to Joanne Street residents and has the solar structures. The last thing I want to point out before we move on is just because we have a dashed line around here does not mean the building is going to encompass that entire area. It simply is showing that this is where we would think that the building could be placed in some configuration and then potentially site work would need to be done around it, whether it's parking or landscaping or driveways or whatever that may be. So don't feel like because this looks the smallest that you're going to get any less of a building. That's not the case. The building is based off of the program, which I reviewed earlier um, and talked about the square footages. So there is no, uh, there is no uh, program that would be eliminated by picking any one of these sites. Okay. okay. I'm going to hand it over to <laughs> Sonia. All right. Well, this project has been a really exciting project for the design team working with the district and the school. I personally have been working on performing arts projects for over 15 years, um, so that's kind of my specialty. But each project has presented its own unique uh, conditions and circumstances, and especially, as Ada had mentioned, like how that building fits into the context of the campus. So I'm just going to um, talk briefly about how we had that process early on, which Ada mentioned in that timeline uh, that was very early on in the project. Mm -hmm. And I think from our perspective, we just want to share the history and how we got to where we got to. And then I think the purpose is to hear feedback. And if there are ways that we improve the project, 
then that's where we want to hear. So uh, we looked at five potential sites. Um, so some of the overarching ideas as we looked at each of the sites is one, it, looking at the overall goals for the project. Um, not just as an arts building, but how it opens, how it has the potential of opening up the campus. Because you can all see that this, the building itself, when it was built in the 60s, uh, the philosophy of the design was kind of looking inward. So all of your student-centric spaces are really inside the building. So we wanted to see how this building may be sited so that it could start opening up nodes for different student activities and how that, that might connect through a master plan over many years uh, over the campus in, in totality. So, you know, this is an arts building, so it's not just for students, education, well, that's the priority, but it's opening out to the community. So how does the community uh, enter? So we look at the circulation, we look at the approach to the building, um, and then how does it also, so this is a large building. Um, it's going to be 55 feet tall. So to give you an idea, this building, the part of the building that we're in right now, is probably about 13 to 15 feet. So when you're placing this larger mass building on the campus, you know, it's going to potentially overshadow some spaces, or it's going to just feel like it's a, a larger piece. So that's one of the considerations as we are looking around on the site, how it's going to impact the existing building and then how it's going to impact the site, the landscape, the uh, bus turnaround, the bus drop off, the way that uh, uh, parents drop off their students, um, how it impacts the, the parking. So those are kind of like the, oh, and also important, how it's going to interact with the other pieces of the program inside of the building. So during our initial programming studies, we looked at where all the existing, where the existing music spaces are, the existing classrooms, and how when students are moving things back and forth, um, that's going to be easy or it's going to be more difficult. Um, so then I'll just kind of run through each of the big picture uh, pros and cons of each of the sites and then I think that maybe we can uh, open it up for discussion or move around uh, to get uh, any more detail that you might want. Um, so one of the first sites that we looked at was this uh, southeast corner. Um, that presented pros, it presented the, an opportunity to be a uh, public facing facility. Um, it did connect in proximity to the interior spaces, the diff different program areas, um, but some of the uh, cons or the drawbacks uh, for the site itself, uh, we have a uh, street uh, light here that is a major intersection to enter into uh, the site and for drop off. So that creates a potential traffic congestion. Um, and the loading also uh, becomes a little bit um, more, um, not tricky, but you know, uh, more sensitive. And um, then there's also the um, sewage room <laughs> that basically all of the drainage through the site is coming to that room. So the feasibility of, of uh, relocating that uh, would add some, we thought, unnecessary costs to the, to, uh, the project. Um, site two is where we ended up with, um, and this, is, this will bridge into site three too, but we have the gymnasium. Uh, which is a taller structure. It's the tallest structure on campus. And so we really looked at that as being a backdrop to the new arts building 
in that it would be able to cascade the scale of the building so that it's not so over, overwhelming. And it also presented a great opportunity for a front face to the community. Um, and then we also looked at um, the area where it intersects with the main entry that exists now. So it was kind of, we're thinking of it as like a, the gateway building of creating a plaza that intersected with the new building um, and the entry into um, um, the main commons. dining commons. area, the commons area, and then the ad administrative area. So looking at that as a node for here is where uh, you enter, not just the new, fine, uh, the new theater, but this is where you enter the, the high school itself. Maybe talk about the challenges a little bit. Oh, the challenges? The challenges are that it is disrupting the senior lawn. And uh, that is, so as we were talking about creating nodes, we, under, we do understand that that, that is something that um, is uh, cherished on the school uh, campus. And um, that we understand that, you know, with, with everything that we put, there's something that's going to be taken. Um, so even though we're removing the trees in that area, we're putting back a new uh, area for activity. So right now, as the uh, senior lawn occurs, that's the place for the seniors to hang out. But it's it's very um, it's very it's not centralized, but it is a congregation area for them. Um, so what we are looking at is a place where you know forums could happen. Uh, different uh, student gatherings where there's actually a, a kind of like where we are now where there's a center point um, and that you could have various activities that are a little bit more organized. Thank you. Thank you. So option three, uh, site three. Now site three also has uh, a lot of the same opportunities that option that site two had, um, but it's a little farther removed from the existing uh, spaces inside of the building. Um, and then there's also uh, removing some of the parking. Um, uh, there, there are opportunities for um, circulation and for ease of loading, and that some parking can be retained um, you are able to keep the lot, the uh, I think we were the banana lot, the the, the bus drop off, in this scenario, uh, and there is still opportunity to create another node, another plaza, but not, but it would be slightly farther uh, disassociated with the main entry. But there are still opportunities there to create certain uh, 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 student areas and also. Um, you know, kind of bridging a connection in between the, um, uh, the, the public face and the, the athletic side. Um, but again, in all of these, uh, in, in, especially in the, the uh, site one, in site three, uh, we do want to keep away from the building. Um, just as a consideration because the building has like exterior windows and I don't think we want to, you know, block the existing building uh, natural light. Mm -hmm. And then um, option four, taking uh, over the area of the uh, tennis courts. And so I think that with that, that has, uh, it, it's probably the most uh, removed from the school, but it does allow for good circulation. However, it does have implications of where do the um, tennis courts go, and it is it is a very much standalone uh, building. And so I think that um, the the cost implications too, and the phasing of the the tennis courts um, is kind of the uh, the downside of of this site. 
And then uh, the last site that we looked at is a tucked uh, on the corner. Um, this one, um, I think that although the square footage is available, um, we don't have the public facing view. Circulation is more difficult. Um, and uh, the, I, I, and I do think that the solar structures would have to be removed, relocated. Um, so there's a, a cost implication to that. But I think with, and, and then there's also the community itself uh, on the, the south edge, because the, the big, as I mentioned, the big mass of that building will be overshadowing uh, that, that neighborhood. So um, that was kind of a, a, a drawback for this location. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we are going to make this presentation available online. We will be posting it on the website so you'll see all those details and up close a little bit better. Um, and so again, it'll be on district website. Our contact information is there. We always have our, you know, make ourselves available to answer questions. If anyone's called me, you know I'll take your call. Um, so what we would like to do, if we have a couple of questions, that's great, but I do want to allow for some time to, sh sure, to walk around and we would just ask that you please write down your comments on questions on the stickies and put them up on whichever uh, site you choose to. It'd be great if you reviewed all of the sites we had the students do that earlier today, and they went to every station, not just one station, because we wanted to really hear their feedback, so we'd appreciate that. Sir? I just want to understand, so site two plans are done, DSA is approved? Correct. Okay, so another site was somehow chosen by the board. That would mean new site plans, and then DSA approved. Correct. And then this could take how long? Depending on when the board approves it, design, design, design alone could be a year, depending on which site was selected. Okay. So if we... And then DSA approval on top of that? Yes. Okay. So if we go, ooh, this is a sticky... <laughs> it wasn't Sonia's fault. <laughs> um, so depending on where, where you put it. So one of the things that when we, once we hear feedback, what we would try to do is determine whether or not the building in its current design is applicable in any of these other locations. So there is an opportunity to say, this building, the way it's designed, the majority of the design can be saved. And so that would be our first attempt. But if you put that building at site five, that building design needs to be scrapped and we need to start over again. Because the building was designed to be uh, the elevation to be the main focal point of the campus with all of the glass. And why would you put all of that glass at the back of the school if you're not going to, you know, be able to see it, right? Um, so, so that's something to consider. That's something we will consider as we hear the feedback. Miss? I apologize if I missed this at the beginning because I was a couple of minutes late. Are there other options being considered, <coughs> or are the ones that we've been shown the only ones under consideration? And is the goal of this meeting to provide feedback on the existing sites, or are we offering other options? Whatever feedback you have is, is your feedback. So you give us your feedback. But we are, we have studied these five sites. So if so there- The advantage would be, these have already gone through the study, so one of these is selected, the process is further along. I wouldn't say so necessarily because what we did was um, when we went through and we evaluated the, these sites with the committee, we did process of elim elimination. So we said site one has the sewage pump station, extremely costly. We have the intersection, we have the residence, we have the fire station, which would um, potentially cause issues for acoustics in the theater itself. So we just said probably not our best option. And we looked at site two, did that same evaluation, and really, because of these reasons on this one and the loss of parking stalls, that's why site two ended up being favorable at the time. However, we've moved to site three, and we considered, okay, how do we regain parking if we put the building in site three? Well, we just make this more permanent parking rather than just overflow parking. 
So there's the, we have to go through the analysis of each of these, but as we went through that process of elimination, we, we ended up doing a further study on what the building would look like in Site 2 and Site 5. So the other three sites haven't been studied as far as Site 2 and 5. Yes? Uh, just for, I just want to, my name is Mike Vargas, I'm the head football coach here, I also teach health. I've been at this school 15 years. I went through Newport Mesa Unified School District. I'm here six days a week. My children go to school here, my daughter does, my stepson went to school here. Uh, I think we really need to take a look at the people that actually live this place. And when I look at these five sections, I'm just letting you know, number one seems to be the best choice because if you go to, if you go to in front of the school, the, the senior lawn, we're affecting the people that have had sick more trees since the beginning of the school. You go to site three, we are not CDM. I'm a Newport Harbor guy. I was there 15 years plus four years, so 19 years at that school there. We have haves and have nots here. And this is the one chance for this school to shine to have a $40 million building right there. When you buy around this area, which I used to live on Raleigh over here, I could hear the speakers from games and stuff like that. I chose to pick where I live right there. So I live with that there. I now live a minute drive from here on the other side of town. I'm a, a fake have. I, I don't <laughs> live in a million dollar right there. Now we're eliminating 200 spots is what I heard from parking where you have a main vein for athletic events right there. Number four, you're not only cutting out tennis courts that a lot of people use. I told Mr. Hall, there will be a pickleball war if you take away a pickleball court, sir. Which also includes stomping on, we're 1,100 people at this school. I have probably 80 kids in the football program here at Estancia High School. Why not improve our area and make it shine just like Newport Harbor, CDM, and Costa Mesa, who has a copycat of our waiting. But if you want to cry, come by our waiting and see what we have to do. We don't complain about that stuff there. So now you're taking out tennis courts and football area and the main vein going to the stadium, which more than just football program uses. Number five in the back there, you're t cutting off. My daughter plays basketball here from 6 to 8 p.m. 40 girls practice and they got to walk in the pitch black there. I invite you to walk out that back and see what kind of lighting there is. But God forbid something ever happened to my daughter walking from around the gym to the parking lot over there. And so, again, you've got Joanne Street. Why not let the west side shine with a beautiful building right there? A Taj Mahal like that at Costa Mesa High School. And again, I live this place just like that man does and the rest of the faculty does on this campus right there. Again, and one last thing, and I'll stop talking there. I'm vested in this place. I've been here 15 years, and I know we've got a bunch of wonderful kids I've had in class here. They're here four years, and they're gone. We're here leaving a legacy. And so I think we have what's in the best interest of everybody because we live this place. Drive down here anytime and see how many cars are parked in that parking lot right over there. Check it out at 1135. Most kids that drive here on this campus don't even have permits, unfortunately, and stuff like that. We're not a driving school. Thank you for your time. So I'm going to let this miss speak first and then you, sir. Um, I just wanted to say that you guys are all parents, so I understand what you guys are looking at at the cost and like the, <laughs> sorry, the efficiency of it, but I think like the coach was saying, we need to look at the students and the perspective. I think the reason why we're going backwards is because the adults approved it without advising the kids, and I think that's what's most important. important. Uh, two, you can always replant trees, but the same people can't come to do it. You know, it's a memory. Uh, three, everybody parks there. They go there for the games. They park there to get into school. Uh, four, I'm in the tennis team. And <laughs> uh, I just can't agree with that one. Same here. Same here. Yeah. Understood, understood. Sir? Oh, I'm so sorry. sorry. No, go ahead. And five also is a lot of, like you said, the girls' basketball plays there. And everybody likes there's tables too, also to eat lunch, and everybody loves to enjoy their time. And I think one would just be the best. I know it's expensive, but I think it's worth it because you get to show the Philippine you know, off. So. Thank you, Miss. Uh, just two questions, quick questions. On five, why is there a panhandle? I don't <laughs> say any need for that. And the other one, just for discussion purposes, where the old pool was, which doesn't look like it's being used for anything, it looks like a big white block. That whole building is that heavy use? I have no idea. It seems to me that could be knocked down and the theater could be put in that location and stick in three a little bit. So the pool infill area, yeah. we have a follow-up project for that area. 
that actually our theater designer is also um, designing enhancements to that area where we're going to have shade structures and seating. And so, like we talked today with the students, some students earlier, obviously not all the students, um, we talked about what they use that area for. So they had, uh, I don't know if it was homecoming or prom, they had some dance there. Um, and so we're going to try to beautify that area to be used long term. The, the spaces adjacent here are the uh, PE yeah. locker rooms, which we have recently renovated. When we did the new pool, we went in and we um, removed the majority of the showers that weren't being used, and we only left the number of showers that were required, and we were able to repurpose all of that mm -hmm. space and create five team rooms. Uh, we created a total of um, uh, eight uh, team rooms, so four and four. Four and four. So. So now, instead of having showers that aren't being used, we have four new team rooms. And then we also created um, a new classroom that is a multi-use classroom. So any team could go in there and look at film and, and do things like that. So we have recently upgraded that facility when we did the pool. And we have plans to upgrade the old courtyard. So I'm going to kind of jump in on your second because... I started off by saying our, our goal was to hear from you, but our goal wasn't to hear from you in this venue of, like, <laughs> I got a thought, I want to hear it. Um, because what ends up happening, although every comment's been great, for every one comment that's been made, 12 questions or thoughts have not been heard. The only way we're going to hear from everybody is to actually break you into small groups and allow you to look at that map, and then from your perspective, if you are a resident, you look at this in a different lens than I do. If you're a student, it may be similar, but it's going to be different. If you're a community member, it's going to be different as well. We want to take advantage of that tonight by giving you the same opportunity that we gave the drama students, and that Otto's going to come back tomorrow and give other students because, believe it or not, 6, 7 o'clock at night, isn't usually the best time to get students' thoughts. <laughs> so we're going to take advantage of the fact that I know where they tend to be at 9 o'clock in the morning uh, and grab more kids. So what we want you to do is interact with us. Use the sticky notes that are different than the yellows. Those are the kids that came first. You can read their thoughts, and you may see something from their perspective that you like, and you can echo it. But we want to make sure that everybody gets the opportunity to share their thoughts in this venue. Every thought, whether it's positive, negative, whether it agrees with my thoughts or not, is going to be captured, memorialized, and shared with the board. Because at the end of the day, the board is going to make a decision. That decision could be one, two, three, four, five. I don't know, but one thing I do know is that this board is committed to ensuring that Estancia gets the theater we deserve and that we need and they will do that in the most efficient manner this possible. Day, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I just wanted to mention that, um, okay, asking questions mm -hmm. is, is good because everyone gets the answer. Oh, right. If you put a question up there, are, 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 you know, are you going to send us all the answers? Right. I mean, how can you make a decision mm -hmm. if, you, if you have to follow this and don't realize the best decision? How can you uh, make a decision if you don't ask the questions and everybody doesn't hear the answer? Like, there's been some great questions and answers that might change people's mind. I think something that wasn't addressed, and, and it was addressed in some of them, safety issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I see huge safety issues. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why one of them is the best choice. <laughs> I, I Listen, safety, I mean, Coach Margus echoed or said an important safety point about one of the challenges of if you put it inside three and you start changing the way students interact with our building. Absolutely. There are really important issues that have to be identified. I'm just going to tell you, us listening to them sort of popcorn one at a time is probably not going to be the most efficient. I know the way groups interact. I know that we tend to hear people like me who enjoy having my voice broadcast, and we don't hear enough from other people who tend to be a little more reserved, and every voice needs to be captured. 
I don't mind having questions, but we're also hearing sort of opinions. statements and opinions. Mm -hmm. So I will, this is a meeting which I'm fortunate to host, but I'm not the person who created it. It was set for six to seven. I'm mindful of the time that it's five minutes till seven. I don't get paid by the hour, and I'm going to be here all night. <laughs> but some of our students actually got to do homework. Uh, some of our parents, like, got to do parent stuff. Uh, and I just know that this meeting does need to culminate. So I will say, I'll take a question if it's an actual question. But statements of opinion, <laughs> statements of fact, like, hey, there's a security thing, write them down. I promise you that they will be read by every decision maker at the site level, at the district level, and the ultimate decision makers at the board level. That's why we're doing this. And you will get the opportunity, Vicki and others, when you have a concern about safety, write it down. Everyone's going to circulate. Everyone needs to circulate and see that. And you will get that same exposure, but you'll get it in a much more efficient manner. My last question. Question. Who's responsible for the solar panels, uh, for the upkeep or and or removal? Who's cost-wise? So the district owns the panels, but we have a contract with the solar company to produce a certain amount of solar. And they actually come clean them and make sure that they're working. If a solar panel gets broken by a baseball, then we have to repair it. But they make sure they're clean so that they're producing as much as they um, committed to in their contract. So it's a, it's a joint agreement, but we own them. And so, and so we also have an obligation to allow that production to occur. So if we tear down three of the solar structures and we don't replace them, then we'll be penalized for not having that production move forward. So the two like kind of financial things. One is the the sewage kind of redoing all of that for number one, and number five would be relocating the solar panels. And then four tennis courts and football. Every site has a positive. Every site has a challenge. Every site is going to have something that we have to spend money on in order to make this thing happen. I love you. I'm not taking because I said one question.